The second type of UDF is an inline table valued function. Let me close this and scroll up. It's inline because we take a single select statement and we place that inline within the UDF. And it's table valued because the data type it returns is a table. And that's pretty cool because that means that these table valued UDFs can be used any place where a data source could be used, such as a table or a view. So inside of this particular function, there is a select statement. And let's run the select statement first, just to get things going. And I'll switch to CHA2, and then select the select statement, being careful not to get that closing parentheses. And sure enough, it executes. So to wrap that select statement with a UDF, we create the function with a name. At this point, there's no parameters yet. The data type is simply table, and we don't have to define the table, it's just simply table, as, and there's no code right here between the as and the return, and right in the return, with the parentheses, we define the entire select statement that will be executed. So let's create the function, f5 execute, and as a data source, we use it right here in the from clause of a select statement. Pretty cool. These inline table valued UDFs can also accept parameters. So in a sense, you're getting the best of a view, the ability to encapsulate a complex SQL statement so it can be used by others in a simpler outer query, and you're also getting the best of a stored procedure, the ability to pass parameters to it. So these inline table valued UDFs are very cool. Let me show you an example with some parameters. Going back to the OBX Kites database, I'll show you first the view version of it, and then the UDF with parameters. So here we're making a view called vPriceList, and it simply finds the current price. And then if we want to use vPriceList to find the current price for a specific product, we have to use that product code in the WHERE clause of the outer query that calls it. And we saw all this back in the lesson for views. But this is just to contrast it with the UDF. So in this UDF, we're adding two parameters, the first being at code, which is a variable being defined right here in the create function. It's a character 10 with a default of null. And the way these parameters are created looks very much like the way the parameters are created for stored procedures. Here's a second parameter of price date, data type of date time. The rest of it is just like the UDF we saw a second ago, where it returns a table as return, and then here is the select statement. And within the select statement, we're referencing the code and the price date parameter. So creating the UDF, and then a couple examples of calling it. It's just spelled out as the UDF name with a couple of parameters. So here we find the prices for all the products on February 20th. And in the second example, we're finding the price for only product 1001 on February 20th, and one row returned. So that's inline table valued UDFs, which takes the basic concept of view and adds to it some of the features of a stored procedure.